Psalms chapter 107. God's help in a time of trouble. <clears throat> oh, give thanks unto the Lord, right? I think Psalms sums it up on Thanksgiving. This nation gives one day a year and they don't even do that. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And we seem to give thanks to the Lord and we went through the whole history of Israel. Let the redeemed now this is about Israel, but I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Say what? Thanks. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now for Israel, it's Egypt, Babylon, Assyria. For me, it's the devil. The blood of Jesus Christ purchased me, Acts 20, 28, which is the blood of God. I have been bought back. I am made by God, sold to sin, my father the devil. And I have been purchased back to be God is my father through the adoption of the spirit by the blood of Jesus Christ, that is God. And gather them out of the lands of the east, that's Israel, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south. Again, that, that's also a, a second advent passage. And the Jews today are all over the world. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. You don't find nothing in the wilderness. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And I, don't, I mean, hungry and thirsty is supposed to be your flesh. But their soul, the eternalness, also fainted. And they didn't believe God. And they didn't serve God. And they didn't trust God. Then they cried on the Lord in their trouble. And that's going to be a theme of this song. It's also the theme of the tribulation, Jacob's trouble. And he delivered them out of the distress. Book of Judges, Ezra, Nehemiah. And he led them forth by the right way that they may go to a city of habitation. Verse 8, you're going to find verse 8, verse 15, verse 21. In verse 31, the same phrase. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And notice it didn't say Israel, men. This is Israel, Gentile, and church. And what happens? We get in trouble. And we call upon God. And God in his goodness and God in his mercy helps us and gets us out of trouble. And many times we don't even thank the Lord. The Lord answered a prayer for us today and instantly, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. We got to remember to thank the Lord. We got to thank the Lord. We got to thank the Lord. And that's what he's saying in verse 8, 15, 21, and 31. God help Israel. God helps the children of men. God helps Christians. And they, I mean, we're coming to the end of coronavirus. Places are opening up for business and business is going to happen. So they say, here in Florida, they open up. The barbers, the hair cutters, and, st and stylists, <clears throat> you know, you have to call for an appointment, but they're back in business here. How many, I don't know how many barbers, stylists, and all that, and, and the nails places, I've seen that at the store. How many of them opened their doors back up, and how many gave thanks to the Lord after they've lost business and are working again? 
How many people worked in the food industry, though a lot of people lost their jobs during this trial? How many of them thank the Lord that they have a job, or do they continue to complain? They're talking about two or three months out of work. And if you go back to work, who are you going to thank? Oh, that man would praise the Lord. I very doubt that that's going to happen. Worldwide. For he satisfies a longing soul. We're going to another section, 9 to 15. Verses 1 to uh, 7. The children of Israel in the wilderness and this horrible and no food, no water. And they didn't thank the Lord. At times... But when the next trial came up, oh, help us, help us. He satisfies the lonely soul and filleth the hungry soul <coughs> with goodness. Excuse me. Now, this is not food. They were hungry and thirsty, verse 5. Now they're sad. They're not happy. And God fills the soul with goodness that would bring happiness. Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death. That's 20 times in the Bible. Shadow of death. Being bound in affliction, suffering, and in iron. Handcuffed. Tied to late iron. Why? Because they rebelled against the words of, the, of God. And condemned that scorn, ridicule, the council of the Most High. There's a penalty for not obeying the word of God. Ask Adam and Eve. God gave them one command. Don't eat that fruit. And they ate it. Therefore he brought. God brought down their heart with labor. They fell down. And there was none to help. God brought the heavy burden of work. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, just like Exodus, and he saved them out of the distresses. Plural. He brought them out of a darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder, the handcuffs, the leg iron. And if that is Exodus, that's something more that we learn. But that could be also any of the captivities in the book of Judges. Or the, the Samuels and the Kings and the Judges. I mean, uh, the Chronicles. It could be any of them. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Not just Israel. He would have said the children of Israel. Do we thank the Lord for his mercy and grace? Do we thank the Lord for him helping us when we disobeyed the word of God? We disobeyed the word of God. God sent the chastisement and he eased the chastisement and he ended the chastisement. And did we thank God for the chastisement and for God letting go? For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. A jail, kind of. Fools, because of their transgression, that's what I am, I'm a fool. And because of their iniquities, are afflicted. They sin, and God gave them evil. God gave them punishment. God gave them chastisement. For their sin. They did the sin. And they got the penalty. I did the sin. I get the penalty. But. The mercy of God we read the other night. He does not give us full. Judgment and full wrath. We read in Psalms earlier. That if. Moses would have not stood the gap. God would have wiped out Israel. In one moment. But, the, but 
Moses interceding in the mercy of God that he repented. Listen, for our sins, we deserve hell. And those that are saved are not going to hell. Their soul, that seems to be another reoccurring word, abhorred, hated all manner of meat. And they drew near unto the gates of death. Well, I read in the wilderness journey, they got sick and tired of the manna. I don't know that's what the meat they're talking about. They got sick and tired of the food that God was feeding them. God, how come I can't have steak? How come I can't eat out all the time, God? They're complaining. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Now, isn't that great? We sin, and God helps us. We sin, we get afflicted, and God sends his mercy. He sent his word, you mean the word that we disobeyed, verse 11, and healed them and delivered them from their destructions, plural. When David numbered Israel and the angel of the Lord is destroying Jerusalem, God said, that, that's, that's enough. Put the sword away. And the destruction stop how powerful is our God not only is our God able to say let there be light enough and God may have said with coronavirus enough let's see how they react and if we continue to sin we're going to get chastised again even more. And God will come up enough. Let's see how they react. And we're going to do a book of judges. We're going to sin. God's going to send judgment in captivity. And we're going to repent. And we're going to be sorry. God's going to come and heal. When he brings us Jesus to deliver us. And we're going to thank God, hopefully. Some don't. Some will. And then we're going to sin. And we're going to sin bad. And God's going to send the enemy. He's going to send the, 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 the affliction. And we're going to repent. We're going to get right. God's going to send the deliver Jesus. And we're going to thank him, hopefully. And then we're going to sin. <laughs> oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. Not Israel. Alone. Would praise the Lord for what? Sending his word saying, okay, that's enough. Heal. You want a story about that? That's the book of Judges. Over and over. Different stories of different trials and different problems. And they may be sin, but hey, there's different problems. There's different deliverers. There's different happenings. There's different sins. It's the same God, but it's not the same sin. It's not the same deliverer. It's not the same weapons. One man uses a jawbone mask. One man uses an ox gourd. One man calls a woman. A woman uses a nail and a hammer. One man has has strength of his hair. A couple judges. He was judged for such amount of time, and then he died. You know, he, there's not even much said. Friend, that's not repetition. That's life. Verse 22. Next set. 
and let them sacri let them sacrifice the sacrifices of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a sacrifice. And many, especially Christians, don't sacrifice. Oh, we're not of the Old Testament. We don't. What does it say? What does Paul say to the Thessalon Thessalonians? Rejoice, Thanksgiving, evermore. Good or bad. And declare his works with rejoicing. Do you have a testimony of God? Yeah, I got troubles. I got problems. But I got a God can relieve me of my problems. Yep. I got this thing inside my ear. They're saying they need surgery. Well, that's bad. Well, not that bad because they say I'm supposed to be in a lot of pain and God hasn't given me pain. Supposedly they go in there, they're going to snip it out, do whatever we do, repair with them, and I should be fine. If I lose my hearing, I got hearing the other ear. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, fishermen. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. So fishermen, lobstermen, crabbers, seafood industry men ought to know more about God than a man working in steel or building woodworks or building automobiles or working in a grocery store. Because according to the Bible, and I grew up with a clan of lobstermen, and working with a clan of lobstermen, I've never come to the conclusion of anything about evolution. I mean, it would be nice to find a lobster with eight claws for food, but never found one. And yet seeing the fish and seeing the, the lobsters and seeing what kind of animals we would catch in the traps and to wonder, we have a great God. And we've been in some massive storm. And I haven't, I, I'm only just a little part of it. The lobstermen I know and, and fierce storms and We've been out in a boat one time, I remember, a place that we traveled often. I mean, we didn't go anywhere where we didn't know. The fog came in and we were totally lost. Had no idea where to go or how to get where we going. And the fog, I remember, was so thick, when you look over the, the side of the boat, you couldn't even see the water. I don't know. I, one man I, I met that was saved later on, but I, I don't know. I don't think they were praying to the Big Bang. I think they're calling on some God for mercy. These see the works of the Lord and the wonders in the deep. For he commanded God. And raises up the stormy wind and lifted up the waves thereof. Who brings the storms? God does. Who brings the hurricanes? God does. Who brought those waves and storms when the disciples were in the ship? God did. Who brought that iceberg for the Titanic? God did. How many sailing vessels were sunk in storms? Where did those storms come from? God. What is the theory behind the, the Bermuda Triangle? God. And if it's the devil, God allowed the devil to do it. Job 1 and 2. They mount up to the heaven. These are the waves. And go down again to the depths. The ship's on the waves. Their soul, there's that word again, is melted because of the trouble. That's what happened in Jonah chapter 1. 
That happens to many of men who are in the Marines. I, I don't. I mean, the Marines also in the military, but I mean the Marines. Anybody who rides ships for a living, whether it be cruise ships, uh, merchant ships, submarines, battleships, aircraft carriers, uh, cargo ships, you face the storm. My grandpa told me in a ship in the in the Pacific. You'd be out there in the Pacific, and one half of the ship, it's stormy, and the other half is sunny and bright. How do you explain that if it's evolution? One side of the ship, hey, we already got sunshine. How do you explain when you're going through something like that, and your clock has to be changed in the time zone? They reeled to and fro and staggered like a drunken man, the ship. And are at their wit's end. Huh? The wit's end, that's a Bible term. Ever use that term? I don't read the Bible. I don't study the Bible. Have you ever used at your wit's end? Oh, yeah, I used it. That comes out of a Bible. Stop using the Bible. Then they cry unto the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Why don't they call on Allah? Why don't they call unto the Hindu spirit? Why don't they call to the great Jehovah Witness in the sky? Because those are not gods. When the men in Jonah's boat were calling upon their gods and sacrificing, and they realized the God of Jonah, and they threw Jonah overboard, and the storm stopped, they worshipped the God of Jonah, the God of the Hebrews. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. The shipment of Jonah. The disciple. Now watch 29. Ready? He maketh the storm calm. So that the waves thereof are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he bringeth them unto the desire haven. Guess what that is? Yeah, that's Jonah. But that's the disciples with Jesus asleep in the back of the boat. Where, the, where, the, where the, the writer of the gospel describes in one place, the water was in the boat. And before they got in the boat, Jesus says, we're going to the other side. Well, the disciples didn't believe him. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You know, the disciples didn't really... They were astonished. What man is this that the waves? I mean, I guess that's a thank you, but not real. You know, they didn't walk up to Jesus and say, thank you. They looked at each other like. And you grew up with a lobsterman like I did. And there's one guy holding the coffee can, bailing the water. And he's like, where'd the water go? I didn't pull all this water out of the boat. Somebody's turned off the bilge pump. I don't think it said they thanked the Lord. I think they were just, what happened? What on earth just happened? What's the Bible say? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Listen, if that boat would have sank, Jesus would have survived. And his disciples would have died. I mean, he float. He walked on the water. Could he not? With the mercy of God, you know what? You guys don't want to have faith. You sink. I'll start walking again. And those disciples with Jesus went through a couple storms that are recorded. Never mind the storms that weren't recorded. Let them exalt him, God. Also in the congregation of the people. You know what they exalt in the congregation of the people? Their pastor. Their favorite missionary. Their favorite evangelist. Their favorite Christian rock group. People today distraught because one of their Christian has denied the faith. Oh, that's old news. We just had one do that, what, six months ago or something? 
Stop following a man and follow the man Christ Jesus. Jesus never gave up on Jesus. Peter denied him. Get your eyes off Peter. John the Baptist. Are you the one or do we search for another? Congregation of people. How's that for a name for a church? A group of people. And praise him in the assembly of the elders. What's your church service like? Who gets the honor and the glory? God or man? He turneth the rivers into the wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. Can't drink, have no water, no thirst. No thirst. I don't know if I can say quencher. But I'm not talking about a drink. A fruitful land into barrenness, no fruit, no no vegetation, no apple, no garden. For a wilderness of them that dwell therein. No a wilderness is nothing. You, you don't get no satisfaction from a wilderness. That they may prepare a city a habitation. And sow the fields, farming, and plant vineyards that may yield fruits increase. Coming up with husbandry. Uh, it's funny because verse 33, 34, and 35, he's made the land barren. 37, they're planting. And he blesses them also that they are multiplied greatly, the people, and suffers not their cattle to decrease. So there's a land that God is making barren, but there's a land for people. And there's growth, and there's population, and there's fruit, there's vegetables, there's livestock. But again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. There's the book of Judges. We're on high. We're on low. We're on high. We're on low. That's the life of Paul. They love me. They hate me. They love me. They don't want me. That's the life of Jesus. Heal me. Now get out of here. He pours contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. You go on an endless journey. Of, you don't feel like you're anywhere. You're not going nowhere. You got no conclusion. You got no afterthought. That may be God. He said it, yet said it he, the poor on high from affliction. All right, he takes care of the, he gives the princes, the leaders of the government, chaos. And the poor man, satisfied. And maketh him family like a flock. You would think God would honor the rich and not the poor. Do you think God would call the elegant speaker rather than a nobody for his gospel? The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe the thing, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. So God, God chastens us because we sin. And we're to thank the Lord when he helps us. And all the suffering and affliction we get, and we're to understand, listen, we deserve it. But we've got half of what we deserve. And we didn't get full punishment. 
for the loving kindness of the Lord. And yet, how many people thank the Lord? Especially Christians. 